Welcome to another episode of Get Your Fill, Financial Independence and Long Life, where we explore ways to achieve those two goals and we invite experts on to help us. And that's why I'm very excited today. We have Leah Ellis with us. She is a money mentor by day and financial coach slash bookkeeper by night with a cape and everything. <laughs> she is all in to help eliminate money stress in America's families and small businesses and her money management, which I love. She has special classes for kids and teens to help the next generation gain confidence in their money handling skills while also learning how to plan for the future and avoid debt, which is so huge because so many people don't get how debt works and they just walk right out of the house and get a credit card, right? And get some student loan debt and let's get going being part of America, right? <laughs> Leah, thank you so much for being with us today. Hi, thanks for having me. So I'm really interested. Um, well, let's start off. Let, why don't you give us some background? Did you always want to be a financial planner? Were you like a really wise teenager who never got into debt? Oh, dear God, no. <laughs> I started out wanting to be a teacher. Um, and then I... I worked in a second grade classroom my senior year of high school. I did an internship. So I went to school eight to 11 and I worked at the school 1130 to four. It was the one of the best jobs I ever had, except for the fact I learned firsthand how very political it is to teach in a public classroom. I'm not cut out for it. I wanted to go cuddle little kids and teach them to read. I wanted to be like the kindergarten teacher that you see in movies. And that wasn't feasible. Um, so I went and sold insurance and then I managed, <laughs> and then I managed that to seems like a logical that. transition. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it paid the bills. I actually met my husband selling appliances at Sears. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. I, I paid my own way selling refrigerators. That's what I did. Um, and I got really good at sales and then I found out I, my husband finished college and I found out I was pregnant with our first kid at the same time he started his first official post-college job. So I was like, woohoo, stay at home mom life for me. And I loved it for like three or four years. Um, I really loved being, staying home with my little girl and we had a second daughter and I really loved it, but eventually I needed to do something thing with my time as much as I love my children I'm a very type a gotta go move forward type of person so we launched a daycare then my house flooded <laughs> it's really hard to run an in-home daycare when you live in a hotel because <laughs> your house is under construction for six months <laughs> yeah so lots of twists and turns came we decided we moved home tried to relaunch our daycare I'm in California so our stay at home order for COVID was issued March 17th. I had open houses booked to relaunch my daycare on March 17th and March 19th. Oh, wow. By March 21st, my city had opened a free childcare facility <laughs> within walking distance of my charging childcare facility. <laughs> yeah. The universe was, is giving you a very strong message here. <laughs> yeah. So it was very obvious by that point that we were not going to be reopening our daycare. And my husband and I had been like talking about financial coaching. We paid off by that point, 75% of our own consumer debt and felt really confident in talking about it. So April 1st, we both enrolled in financial coach master training through Ramsey solutions, March or May 1st, we launched our financial coaching business and I haven't turned back, um, May and June. Every adult I talked to said, nobody taught me this when I was a kid and I just don't understand it. And I got tired of like listening to that excuse. So I took my teaching background and I wrote an eight week curriculum for 13 to 16 year olds. And on day one of class, I tell them, congratulations, you're never allowed to use that excuse again. I'm going to teach you while you're a kid. <laughs> <laughs> and Excellent. so now, and then I wrote another curriculum for five to 10 year olds. And now I don't care how old you are. You're going to learn how to budget. That's so good. That is such a, that, it's just such a, a, an asset to start life that way, to understand how money works and to understand, you know, the power of compound interest, right. And all that magic that, you know, we, that I found out at like age 50 or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, fantastic. So tell me, how do you get, how do you make this, um, digestible for children? How do you like put this into a framework that they can understand it? 
so well, I, my kids, I have a six-year-old, a three-year-old and a six month old and my six-year-old and three-year-old get paid with all of their allowance and $1 bills. So that it's easy to see how much it is because it's just ones. Um, and they have budgeting wallets that I made for them for Christmas that have four plastic envelopes inside of them. And so they have short-term saving, long-term saving, spending, and giving. And they know that they have to put $1 in each envelope before they can like stuff the spending envelope with every last penny and go buy like every toy they see in the toy aisle. They know they have to start by spreading it out. My six-year-old will tell you that her long-term savings envelope is because she wants a hot pink Mazda Miata with the eyes that open as her first car. Wow. That's so good. That is so, most kids can't see beyond the next toy. Yeah. She knows that she is saving for her car and she knows the car she wants. She says, I'll buy one that's white and I'll have it painted pink. And uncle Christopher can do it. Cause he has a shop. Wow. That's fantastic. <laughs> so how about your three-year-old? Um, my three-year-old doesn't quite understand that she's going to have to buy a car and go to college someday. <laughs> But she does understand that there's money she gets to use now and there's money that she has to use for other people and that there's money she has to wait to use. So she's getting there. Um, she doesn't just the, the long term aspect of it is still really difficult for her. But understanding no right now is, believe it or not, something she can grasp. My six year old is capable of saying no to instant gratification or my three year old can say no to instant gratification, even though I know many 26 and 27 year olds cannot. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Wow. So when you're dealing with other people's kids who haven't had the advantage of, you know, sort of having this daily in the household, what kind of challenges are you finding? Um, one of them is that they truly have no idea what anything costs. And so they tell me they're going to buy a new car for a hundred dollars. And I'm like, only if it's a one thirty second scale. <laughs> Like that's a really cool car toy, but it's not going to get you going places. Um, not having a, a firm grasp of what it takes to earn the money. And then um, because I break my class down so simply, by the time I tell them, well, that item is going to cost about this many dollars, not what you thought it would, then their eyes get big and they say, oh, wow. And then they start talking about how they would save to get that anyway. They're like, well, we still want the thing. We're just going to have to save longer. But getting that mindset of it's not, no, it's not right now helps when they start really little. Yeah, definitely. So are you, how are you finding students? Are, do you just go to a regular classroom or you, the parents are enrolling them? The parents enroll them. I, I previously, I taught on an online learning platform, um, but they take a large cut and I was tired of them taking their cut. So now it's just on my website. So you can go to my website and you can book my class and I teach it virtually. So it doesn't matter what country you live in or what time zone you're in. We can schedule a time because Zoom connects us all. <laughs> yes, it does. I'm so glad I had Zoom stock way before the pandemic. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I looked at this total sidebar, but I looked at my portfolio one day and I was like, what happened? Because it had gone up so much. And I was like, what the heck? And I'm like, Zoom is $430 or whatever it was. I'm like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> That's awesome. The, so the, I was very fortunate. The platform I used to use to teach, I started teaching on in 2019. So I was already really familiar with teaching online and using Zoom and virtual meetings. So when the pandemic hit, I was like, hey guys, welcome. You're going to love it here. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. It's a huge advantage. Yeah. Cause we were doing it for our meetings, you know, I have like yeah. some virtual stock investment club and stuff and we were doing it for our meetings. And I was like, Oh, you know, we love zoom, you know, it was so great and flexible. And I said, I'm going to get some stock for, on zoom, you know, uh, for, from zoom anyway, that's not, <laughs> I mean, it is related to finance, right? Cause you, yes, you find a company you love and you buy the stock, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah. But because the reason I asked about whether the parents were enrolling the kids is I was wondering if you ever get any sort of pushback from the parents who are not maybe as evolved financially as the kids are now becoming. Um, I had, I've taught about a hundred students in my 13 to 16 year old class. And I have had one mom who got very angry because I teach. So I've mentioned I'm a Ramsey solutions coach 
which means I teach no debt is good debt. And yes, I know there are financial advisors who will tell you to leverage other people's money. That doesn't work for me because then I get over enthusiastic and I cause debt. <laughs> I'm like, I'll know do thyself, that. Right? <laughs> yes, exactly. That doesn't work for me. So I teach the kids to limit the temptation because if you never have the option, it doesn't become like, oh, well, it's okay for this, but not this. You just don't do it. And this one mom got really mad at me when I explained manual underwriting to her child and how sh her child could buy a house with no credit score because she was trying to put her kid on her credit card because you have to build your credit. So someday you can buy a house and her kid talked back. <laughs> <laughs> no, Miss Leah said. <laughs> so there's a new rule in my classes that they're not allowed to use my name against their parents. <laughs> That's a probably I good rule. <laughs> and I changed the class outline to include a, an asterisk and a disclaimer that I teach a no credit method. And I understand there are other methods. And I can recommend teachers who teach other methods so that your child can have both viewpoints and make their own choice, which is really what it comes down to is having the education and then making your own choices. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like you say, if you, if, if debt doesn't work for you, some people are very, I mean, I'm pretty comfortable with debt as long as I know that there's the money is coming in to cover that debt. Right. So I bought something that now is going to pay me enough, more than enough to cover that expense. Yeah. doesn't feel like my debt, but yeah. yeah, credit cards, no car payment. No, you know, no, none of that stuff. Yeah doesn't so, work for me either. <laughs> I get, I get overzealous. <laughs> Perfectly understandable. <laughs> this place, so, I have $5 extra a month from this investment. So I'm just going to go ahead and pay and charge 500. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mine is like, this is really pretty and it's only $30 a month and my spending budget's a hundred dollars a month, but I've already have $50 a month worth of other things that were only so much a month. And then I have no money to buy food. <laughs> like if I want to, my husband and I each have our own spending budgets and then we have a family grocery budget. And I like to use my personal spending budget to go to Starbucks. And I get really sad when there's no money for Starbucks because I'm spending it all on payments. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Oh boy. So what's, what do you think is like the most fun or challenging? Is there anything about doing this that is a lot different than what you expected? Um, teaching adults who come to me desperate and then don't listen to me. Like, you can't tell me that you're willing to do anything except for that. It's a, I would do anything for love as a meatloaf song, not a way of life. <laughs> That's yeah. I, all, anything except right. Give up Starbucks. No, I can't do that. That's not yeah. on the table. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, well, then you're not going to fix your table. You're going to keep wobbling until you, you try something new. Um, and people who assume that if they close their eyes and put their fingers in their ears, then the debt collectors will magically fall away. <laughs> um, that drives me really insane. Um, I, because I'm a financial coach and I work with people who are trying to avoid bankruptcy, who have a lot of debt. I wrote a script for how to talk to the collectors. So they don't even have to think about it. They can put the paper in front of them and read. And I still had clients who quit. They left my service altogether. They told me they didn't want to continue coaching anymore because I wouldn't, I wouldn't help them until they would talk to the collectors because we didn't know what they owed. And I was like, I can't help you make a payoff plan without knowing what the debts are and they wouldn't talk. So they quit coaching and six months later called me that they were being sued and wanted to know how I could help. <laughs> and I referred them to an attorney. <laughs> yeah. But that's what gets them into that situation in the first place. Right. You know, yeah. I'm not, oh, I can't answer the phone. It's a debt collector. I can't talk to them. I can't admit that I've got this issue. Well, right. Head in the sand, mm, not a, not really much of an investment strategy. <laughs> No, or a life strategy. You have to admit, I mean, admit that the mistakes happened, try and fix it. I don't, we have the same problem with my six-year-old. She doesn't want to take responsibility for her actions when she trips her sister. And she says, well, I didn't know it would trip her if I put my foot in front of her feet. And I'm like, well, you, you knew that that was a bad choice. You need to admit it. And you need to ask her if she needs an ice pack to fix it. <laughs> See, life lessons, not just for finance, well, <laughs> applicable I, all across the board. <laughs> because
because our opinions around money are applicable to every aspect of our lives. Yeah. One of the first things I teach is money mindset. It's the first week of my class for 13 year olds is how your opinions on money shape the way you use money. Do they get that? Do you feel like they're, that they're connecting? You can give them examples that allow them to. You know, um, one of the things since they're all minors is most of the time they've seen their parents fighting over money and it's still a fairly fresh feeling for them of like, oh, this causes a rift. So they listen a little bit more. And when I'm able to name the emotions for them and tell them Americans feel fear, shame, grief, and overwhelm around their money, then they're like, oh, I don't want to feel that way. How do I not feel that way? (laughs) Yeah. I just, you know, I think about, I have a friend who teaches, um, you know, investing and stuff and she's got this chart, right? The time value of money, which I think she got from somewhere. I'll try to find it and put it in the notes, but, you know, starting at 15, starting at 13, starting at six to put money in the bank or, you know, someplace where it's going to get interest. It's just like, I mean, what a huge advantage, right? I mean, just (laughs) mind blowing. I do that with my students. It's one of the things I do. I tell them the average American pays $550 for a new car payment, which I'm certain has probably gone up by now, but I haven't checked it. So if they were to take that $550, from 16 to 50 to 66, it's $13 million. And they're all like, what? And I'm like, yeah, I don't expect you to actually start saving $550 a month at 16, but I wanted you to see that this was possible. And then I had a 13 year old student who owned a landscaping business. And by that, I mean, he's, he mowed lawns and he charged people and he collected payments and had a business name. That's taxable income, and you can fund a Roth IRA as soon as you have taxable income. So I told him, if you start funding your Roth IRA with $50 a month right now at 13 years old, by the time you're 60, just that $50 a month is, it was, I think, $2.3 million. That's assuming he never invested more than a penny, like a penny more than that $50. Like he did $50 a month when he was 30. He did $50 a month when he was 20. Yeah. Yeah, so who's going to do that, right? I mean, everybody's going to be yeah. <clears throat> increasing that. a month is so easy. But then once you get older and you get a, a real job and you, you know, get a few promotions, that money's going to keep increasing. And so the amount of money that you have at the end is, it can be astronomical, but you have to start. So what, what's a good investment for, for kids? you know, like, okay, well, they've got this child has his $50 a month. He's going to put away what, what's a good thing that will, you know, not be too taxing. And so I'm not a financial advisor, so I cannot tell you go buy these things because that's illegal. And the SEC would get really mad at me, but I can (laughs) tell you that if the kid is doing it with their own money and you want to use a Roth IRA, you can take money out of a Roth to pay for higher education expenses so they can still use it for college if they want to take the money out for that. Otherwise, a high yield savings account that they have the liquidity that they can pull money out, but they're still earning a little bit of interest is good for kids because they don't always have the long, long term thoughts of I'm 13. I need to save for retirement, (laughs) but I'm 13. I need to save for college is a lot more attainable. So putting it in a college fund, um, whatever your state offers or putting it in an ESA or a high yield savings account that they can use for college limits the risk. So they don't lose their college fund because 13 year olds only have like six years until college. So they can't really have a super risky investment or they're going to be in trouble, but something stable with some interest can be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes a lot of sense. You know, you want to be able to pull the money out if you need to, you want to be able to have that liquidity rather than putting it someplace where you're going to be dinged if you take it out or, you know, you have to wait for the market to be in the right place or whatever. Well, yeah. And for 13 year olds, I mean, like I said, it would be fantastic if they all started saving for retirement, but they're just not thinking that far ahead. It's hard to get a 13 year old to think to age 30, let alone it's hard to get a 40 year old to think about planning for retirement. Never mind. Thirteen year old. You, you have a point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can Leah, start this, saving uh, next year. Yeah, exactly. Saving for, you know, next week's dinner. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So 
I love this. I love how you're teaching kids. And can you give us some advice? Like, what if I, like, I have a nephew, he's 16 and I don't, I think he's like, he saves for like Lego or, you know, the next ma magic series cards or something. How, what can I do? Like to sort of get him to think a little bit differently. Do like I do with my kids, make them have two savings, one for short-term, one for long-term. And the long-term has to be like at least five years. Like this is not money you get to touch right now. Like how this is money that's going to sit for at least five years so that they get used to the idea that some of their money needs to be for the future. And some of their money is for the short term. And the other thing is I tell grownups, I tell kids, I tell everybody, there is exactly three things you can do with money. No matter what labels, what names, what colors you paint the envelopes, there are three things you can do with money. You can spend it, you can save it, and you can give it away. If you are using your money wisely, you are doing all three of those things. Do a little bit of all three, but understand that no matter what fancy labels you put on the investment, it's still saving. <laughs> right. <laughs> and understand that you can spend it, you can save it, and you can give it. You can't take it with you when you die. True. So keep it moving. Keep it going. Yeah. Keep it flowing. Yeah there's liquidity in money because it moves and you shouldn't be moving it and using it. Um, I have a lot of clients who my clients come to me because they have no problem spending money and a lot of problems saving money. So they come to me, but when I do like money mindset lectures and seminars, I have lots of people who come to me who are terrified of spending money, but they will save it until their fingers are turning blue because they're holding it so tightly. In order to have a healthy financial life, you need to spend, save, and give. You have to do all three. Wow. I think that's almost seems like, you know, kind of like, um, what's the word? Like, like radical. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, Cause the first person I told her, yeah, you have trouble spending money. I have a challenge for you. I want you to go out today and do something ridiculous and it needs to cost at least 50 bucks. <laughs> I, uh, I want it to feel a little thrilling because the first time you do it, you're going to be like, I can't believe I'm spending $50. And the second time you do it, you're like, this was so much fun for $50. <laughs> do you like, remember what she did? I don't. She didn't tell me. Oh, but I also issued it, this challenge to a podcast host and I'm waiting for him to email me because he assured me he would email me with what he did for his challenge and he has children. So I'm hoping it's something fantastic for his kids. Yeah. Something fun. I have, well, I mean, one of my things that I love to do in the summertime, it's not too much in the winter. You can do it a little bit, but, um, it's fine things that are free. I love like, like, what can, how many things can I do this weekend that cost absolutely nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. We, we live really close to LA, so I can Google like free things to do in Los Angeles and drive down there in an hour. But mm -hmm. we also budget, like if we're going down to LA, we're going to eat at the cheesecake factory and I'm going to spend $50 <laughs> on cheesecake. <laughs> <laughs> That's $50 well spent. It, Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> but it means I have to be willing to say, I'm, I'm willing to let go of $50 to the experience of enjoying this chocolate cheesecake. And watching my kids eat chocolate cheesecake. <laughs> um, so tell me about the book that you wrote. So I, everybody writes a book. Everybody <laughs> writes a book. I didn't want to write a book because I don't want you to read my life story on how I manage money because my life is not your life and it's not practical. Instead, I wrote a workbook and it is 12 pages that takes you step by step through how to write an actual budget because nobody knows. And so it's six steps across 12 pages and half the books for you to write in. And you actually get to do a budget and you write in all your bills. And then on the very last page, there's a QR code to scan because once again, technology is amazing. And when you scan the QR code, you, but you can book a free budget review with me. And I usually charge my clients pay. Most clients are at $150 an hour to meet with me and you get it for free. To awesome. go over that, to go over your budget. The plan that so you put together. Yeah. So you actually have to sit down and do the book and then show it to teacher. Say, look, I did it. 
And I'm there to tell you great job because first of all, finishing the book is a huge milestone because if it's the first time you've ever done a budget, it's terrifying. And two, be the friend who's there to tell you this is great, but are you really budgeting $75 a month for Starbucks when you still have three credit cards? Let's, <laughs> let's pull this out until the credit cards are done. For the record, my, my Starbucks budget is $15 a month and I wish it was more. <laughs> That's funny. Oh God. I'm so glad I don't drink coffee. <laughs> it's I, probably saved me a million dollars by now. <laughs> probably. I'm really, I'm really good. My Starbucks budget is only $15 a month because I really do only go like once or twice a month. But I make a lot of really, really tasty homebrewed coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's and then it's a treat, right? It's not just yeah. like, I mean, I, I don't even think you enjoy it as much, right? If you're going every single day to your favorite place and getting your favorite thing. I mean, is it even special anymore? No, it, it stops being a treat. And I will tell you that my, tr my trick is my favorite thing at Starbucks is the um, cold brew vanilla sweet cream. So I learned how to make vanilla creamer. So I have half and half in vanilla syrup and I put it in my coffee at home. Oh. <laughs> Every day is a, is a special day. <laughs> exactly. Only I pay like 20 cents instead of $5. So now your, your um, workbook is, is it appropriate for a younger person or is it more geared toward adults? I recommend my workbook. It's $10 for the digital copy for like 18 and up. Um, it's I had at, right at Christmas time. I had like 20 women buy it as stocking stuffers for their children in their twenties. Cause they were like, my 20 year old won't listen to me because that's what happens is our kids stop listening. So they were like, we're just going to give them this book for Christmas. It's really great for young adults who are like learning how to grow up for the little kids, the five to 10 year olds. I do my budgeting basics class is $10 and it's half an hour. So it's the best 30 minutes that they're going to spend on their financial futures. Um, and it comes with a worksheet that they can then print and use until they're they've outgrown the basic budgeting, um, which is about the time when they're going to hit needing the workbook to learn how to do a grown up budget. So it covers them all the way across. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm really impressed that you're doing this. You know, I mean, I think for a financial planner, right? The big money is, is more in grown ups, right? You're not going to get rich, you know, selling your kids $10 a, a lesson, but it's, it's so, it's going to make them rich. It's exactly. Life-changing. It's absolutely life-changing. Yeah. And one of the fantastic perks that I tell people all the time is since I'm a financial coach, my job is to teach. I don't, I don't sell investments, so I don't have to worry about, well, do you have enough money to invest? What's the commission? I get to say, you need to learn this. You need to make your life better. And then I get to teach it. We just partnered with a nonprofit and I've got five clients that we're doing pro bono to help the nonprofit grow. And I'm like, this is the best because these, these clients need it. Like they, they need it so badly. And because my job is teaching them and, and loving them and giving them, you know, the guiding hand that they didn't have when they were younger, I just do it. And it's fun. You're muted, Christine. Thank you. You're welcome. So Leah, I mean, I, I love this. I, I love your energy. I love all the stuff you're doing. It's just so fantastic. Um, tell, tell me, you know, what should I have asked you? What more like things that you have to share that I just didn't think to, to, to jump on? Um, the number one thing you can do today to change your financial health. Um, cause everybody gets really overwhelmed and like, I'm not ready for X, Y, and Z down the road. The number one thing you can do right now is make a budget. Um, do it. I know it's terrifying. I call it the B word on my website because people really like whisper it under their voice. <laughs> um, it's not a bad thing. Go do your budget, understand where you are financially, because if you don't know your starting line, you're never going to get ahead. Um, to do the budget and then look for accountability um, somewhere. Yeah. Somebody has to keep you accountable outside of just yourself because it's too easy for Leah to tell Leah it's okay to break the rules. If 
But yeah, it's Christine like, I, is going to tell Leah, no, you said those were the rules. You need to stick with it. Remember why you're doing it. Yep. Like a diet or your exercise plan, right? You're like, oh, well, it's okay if I don't do it today because it's cold out and whatever. And you know, I'm really hungry. So I probably burned a lot of extra calories. <laughs> Yeah. And we have, um, I'm very visual. So when we were paying off all of our debts, I put debt payoff charts on the entire back of my door. So my bedroom door was covered in debt payoff charts. They're actually still there because now I like to see them and be like, look at what I did. Yeah. Um, but it kept me motivated every day. Um, my kids helped color it in. So when payday came, my daughter would come and she would be like, how many lines do I get to color in this time, mom? And when it was only one line, because mom had done something I shouldn't do, she was like, why is it only one line this time? And that made me feel terrible. Cause I was like, I'm stealing her joy, by <laughs> wasting my money. <laughs> wow. That's great. Yeah. And that it does help. Like you say, every time you see it, you're like, Oh boy, I'm paying off my debt. Yeah. You know, you get that great energy. Yeah. Keep mm. motivated, keep accountable because no matter how much debt you have, it's probably not going to be paid off tomorrow. And it's going to take some sacrifices not to get back into it when it's done. So enjoying the journey and shifting your mindset is going to give you so much freedom that instead of feeling sad that you couldn't buy new shoes on your credit card, you're excited to color in the, we paid off the credit card lines on your debt payoff chart because you're seeing new goals Yeah, and having hope for a better future. So true. It's so true. But that is a big mindset shift. You know, I know it's overwhelming when you have a ton of debt and you're just like, what's the difference? You know, what, who cares what difference is going to make if I, you know, have Starbucks every day and eat out every night and, you know, it's not going to matter because I already have so much debt. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, challenge. we, we started with $123,000 worth of debt and it was really easy to be like, well, why bother? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a whole other story. When my second daughter was born, we financed a hundred thousand dollars worth of consumer debt in six days. <gasps> what? <laughs> that's like a record, isn't it? <laughs> I, it has to be somewhere. Um, but then we paid off $123,000 in debt in 23 months because I decided we were going to be debt-free before her second birthday. <laughs> wow. That's an ambitious goal. That's fantastic. Yeah. It yeah. was a lot of work. <laughs> I'm sure. Wow. Yeah. People need to hear that. That's fantastic story. <laughs> oh, it, it's a fun one. Um, we'll have to come another time and I'll tell you that, crazy, <laughs> that crazy roller coaster. Yeah, but the, yeah. at the end of the day, I don't tell you anybody to do anything that I didn't do myself. I know it's possible because I, I did it. I made like the world record of bad financial decisions. <laughs> <laughs> and then turned around and made a fantastic, some fantastic decisions. Exactly. Right? And then I turned around and I paid off my debt in 23 months. And now I teach your kids how to not get in debt. So much easier to never get in debt in the first place. So much easier. <laughs> Can you imagine what your life would have felt like if you never paid a car payment from the day you moved out of your parents' house? Or even if I'd known to save money. I mean, yeah. you know, I just didn't, I didn't understand how many jobs I took at, you know, leaving as like a 22 year old and just cashing in my IRA or whatever, cashing in my, whatever they gave me. It's like, oh, it's only $7,000. I might as well just take it. You know what I mean? Instead of like leaving it there, letting it grow, like just not having a clue, not understanding, you know, not coming from a particularly you know, family that had a ton of wealth and understood the time value of money and all that kind of stuff. You just, I don't know, but it's also well, like, you know, you meet rich people, you, you got to stop and say, well, how'd they get rich? Right. <laughs> yeah. What can but they then you, them? but then you, a lot of times we meet rich people and we think they, that they got to be millionaires by stepping on somebody else's back. And truthfully, being an, a millionaire is so attainable. Like hitting a million dollar net worth is not the feat that it was a hundred years ago. Right, right. Um, it's very attainable, but you have to have the mindset to save money and to wait. Some of it is letting the time value of money catch up yeah. and yeah. getting there. Definitely. Definitely. So Leah, how can people reach out to you? What's the best oh, way to get in touch and get, take your courses and all that good stuff? I'm a millennial. So you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. I'm not millennial enough for TikTok though. <laughs> I don't so know. We, I don't know exactly what you do on TikTok with, uh, for financial planning anyway. <laughs> you know what? I, 
there's some that come across my Facebook feed that are really cool. Um, I'm just, like I said, not that much. <laughs> I'm too close to 30 for that now. That was like when I was 25. Um, but I'm on Facebook, I'm on Instagram. And then I also have a LinkedIn page. And then of course you can just go to endeavorfinancialcoaching.com. We're American. So the endeavor is spelled like the space shuttle. There's no you. Um, right. <laughs> that's the, the biggest thing. It's E E E N D E A V O R financial coaching. Um, check out our website. Um, there's also some funny blog posts where I talk about, you know, the B word. <laughs> awesome. Well, and all those links will be on the, on the, uh, in the show notes, of course, so yeah. that you can reach out to Leah and share, I mean, get some of these fantastic tools that she's created for yourself, for your kids, for your nephews and, you know, grandchildren, whatever, because, I think it's better actually for a third party to be doing the teaching in these kind of things, right? If, if it's, if it's possible. It clears some of the emotion out of it yeah. um, because I am a neutral third party. Um, I don't care what grandma said versus what grandpa said, which is versus what your uncle said. Right. I'm going to tell you, this is what I teach and you're a human capable of free will and your own choices. If you choose to disregard it, I provided you with the information and it's, I'm not emotionally invested. And in if you follow through or not. Right. Exactly. You're not going to be following the kid around saying, you know, I can't believe you spent your money on that. You know? <laughs> yeah. And most kids who come to me, I ask them, what have your parents teach you about money? And all they tell me is safe, 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 safe. And they all hate money because they think they work really hard. They get money and then they're not allowed to use it. Right. And so when I tell the kids, no, you get to spend your money. You just have to have a goal for where you're spending it. They get really excited and then they go and tell their parents, I'm saving some, but I'm spending some. <laughs> and it's easier for their parents to chew too, because at least their kids understand why they're saving in the first place now. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Thank you so much for being with us today. This has been great. And listeners, I know that, you know, at least 10 people who can benefit from Leah's advice. So please share this episode with them and we'll see you next week.